Good morning, everybody. My name is Howard Traceman. I'm the CTO of Evoca Technologies. And with me on stage, I have Kevin Atkinson, who's one of our senior solution architects. I'd just like to um, spend a couple of minutes uh, framing the problem that some of you, and I think most of you are technical people at Findivar, that some of you might experience uh, in your jobs. When somebody from the business comes to you and says, we're currently in the midst of a, of a digital transformation initiative. And what that means is that any one of our customers or prospects needs to be able to uh, come onto one of our digital properties, onto our website, or onto a kiosk in the, in, in the uh, branch or, or wherever, and apply for any one of our products or services um, online and have a fantastic interactive digital experience. Um, and I would like to know whether you can build that for us. And what I'd like to do is show you an example of one of these uh, um, uh, experiences, uh, just so that you get a sense of what it is that you're shooting for. So um, uh, it's, it's a beautifully styled uh, uh, application. It looks great on, on, on desktop. It'll also uh, shrink down on, on different devices, so it'll automatically adjust responsibly to different devices. It has some sort of navigation paradigm because these are typically, um, in financial services, your applications are quite lengthy. So some sort of uh, navigation paradigm that allows me to see where I'm up to and navigate through the, uh, through the uh, application process. Um, it has built-in save and resume because we know that Customers don't necessarily have all of the information that they need in order to complete an application in the first sitting, so they may need to save it and come back to it later, or maybe even uh, cross channels from their, their phone to their desktop when they get to work. Um, and uh, it'd be also nice if we had some, some of these really cool features, and, and one of them I saw was we, we always need to capture some sort of identity documentation, such as a driver's license, but wouldn't it be cool if we, when we uploaded that driver's license, not only do we store the image or you know, take a photograph of the driver's license, but we actually send that off to a scanning service which pulls off the, the information off the driver's license and pre-populates the form so that I have to do less typing. And of course it needs to um, integrate into our back-end systems as well. And um, for you as technical people, one of the decisions that you uh, need to make is do I build that or do I try and buy something to help me build that? And you're all smart guys and I'm sure if I took a poll uh, and, and I said who could build that, you'd all put up your hands and say yes, I could build that. So what I'd like to do is just walk you through um, the, the thought process or the design process you may go through when you think about building something like this and just show you what it might look like. So, you know, you saw a form, so you've obviously got to build a form, and you know there are a bunch of technologies that you can kind of cobble together to, to build that, a uh, bit of coding, a uh, bit of uh, CSS to do the responsive bits, and you'll need some sort of server uh, to host this, this content, and when you hit the submit button, it needs to go somewhere, so you'll need that. Um, and then we talked about the save and resume thing, so we'll need a database and one of these guys uh, to save the data. And, it's sensitive data, so we better encrypt it, so we'll need one of those frameworks, and we probably need this in the DMZ because we're gonna to need to do it all over SSL, do our SSL termination, and do all of this stuff, and there are probably gonna be times of the day when it's very high load, so we need to worry about um, all of these things here, and we probably need to have one of those. And then they haven't talked about it when, when they came to talk to us, but they're probably gonna need these two UIs as well, which means we need to think about this, and then we need to do that as well, and, we need to integrate into the back-end system, so we need some of this. And um, then there was that OCR thing, we need to integrate with it, and probably some others that they haven't mentioned yet. And then they're gonna probably wanna iterate and optimize, and so we're probably gonna need to think about that and that. And then they're gonna probably need to serve up one of these to the customer, so we'll need to do this. And then integrate with the website, so we'll need these guys and, and that, and they're probably gonna come to us with some of these things we haven't thought about yet. And, and, and you know, all of these things uh, some of which I don't even know how to do yet, and the list goes on. And then you need to think about, well, how am I going to resource this? How am I going to staff it up? Am I going to bring together this big multidisciplinary uh, team to deal with all of this technical stuff? And then when we're done with the first application, um, we, do we then keep the team around in case they need to do little incremental changes, or do we move them on to other projects? And what about all of those other application processes that we need to build, how, are we going to form a different team for each one or have one massive, how, how are we going to resource this? And with that, I'd like to introduce the, the buy option, which is our platform, Evoca Transact. Um, 
what we do is we take all of that stuff that you would need to build as part of a web application to, to, to uh, perform this function, and we encapsulate all of that in our platform. So we build it all so that you don't have to. And we allow you to just focus on a couple of pieces of that, of that puzzle. The form that you need to build is always going to be individual to your organization, so we provide some great tools for allowing you to build that, or what we would like to call the interactive data collection application, and the integration because uh, we do support some back-end systems, but you may have uh, you know, highly customized systems that only uh, you use, and so we, we need to build that bit of it for you or help you build that. But we focus just on those two pieces. And what does that mean for your team? Well, it means instead of this large uh, multidisciplinary team, you can have a much more focused team that just deal with the, the, these two bits of the problem. Um, and that means that you can get things built much more quickly. Uh, partly because we provide tooling to allow you to do this very quickly. And you can iterate very quickly, because instead of dealing with the data collection application as a piece of software that needs to go through a full software development lifecycle every time you want to make a change, we deal with it more like a piece of content, like you would a, a page in your content management system. And you just modify that, treat it as a piece of content, redeploy it, and you're, and you're done. Um, and lastly, uh, as technical people in the room, you probably have um, used platforms before where you do uh, hit the limitations of the platform, and we just like to show you a little bit of an example of um, how you're not going to get painted into a corner. The system is highly extensible and customizable, so you're going to be able to make it do what you need it to do. With that, I'd like to hand over to the interesting part of the demo, my, my colleague Kevin, uh, who will actually show you how we build some of this stuff. Okay, so we're going to build out this customer onboarding experience uh, on the Avoca Transact platform. And along the way, we'll uh, highlight a few of the many, many features that are built into the platform. We will uh, click and drag and show just how quickly and easily we can bring a new application to market and make changes to it after it's to market. We'll show you that um, it's an exercise of configuration, uh, not coding. And we'll address this problem that's been introduced of being painted into a corner and show you uh, some extensibility. So what we're looking at right now is the form authoring environment that's part of our platform. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, we have uh, the pre-built pre widgets uh, that go all the way from simple controls such as uh, text inputs and date pickers all the way up into more complex kinds of functionality. We can also look at the form structure or aggregate these two together and look at them at the same time. In the center of our screen, we have the form design area, which is um, a, a real representation of what this user experience is looking like. Uh, it's built in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, so what we're looking at is a true representation of what we're building. On the right-hand side, we have some modal dialogues um, to change the properties of all of the widgets that we're putting together into our application, including the visual uh, properties and attributes, the functional characteristics, and the data mappings of these as well. So we've built out, we've partially built out this onboarding loan application, and that's what we're looking at right now. You can see that there are some uh, features of the platform, such as navigation bar, save and resume that we've talked about earlier, the header and the footer uh, components of the um, tooling as well. And let's use this as a starting point, and we'll build onto this and extend it to demonstrate some of our, our platform's capabilities. So let's go ahead and add a new page into our application. And we'll create a getting started page. And we'll use this to start collecting some information about the applicant. Um, you'll notice that this becomes part of our navigation bar. And, and as we highlighted before, that this environment shows us a real time, a real representation of what we're building. We'll add a section in here and uh, collect some information about the applicant, such as their email address and telephone number. We could use this early on in our user experience to collect a lead um, if they don't continue. We'll also add a button group, and we'll ask the applicant at this point if they would like to include a co-applicant in the Sloan application. 
Notice that um, over on the right-hand side, we've got a list of predefined choices that we can pick from. So these are inbuilt features of the platform. We can pick our yes-no grouping, but we can also create custom uh, lists and extend it if we need to. Notice that we've got some drag and drop and layout capabilities in the design tool itself, and we can move these elements around. We also allow you to customize the layout properties across all four device types. As you can see, we support um, capabilities on desktop, on tablets, as well as on mobile. So let's go ahead. The reason we want to ask this question of, is there a co-applicant? We would like to collect the information at the same time for this co-applicant we're adding into our onboarding experience. So let's go ahead and add a new page. And what we'd like to demonstrate to you is just how quick and easy it is to build a new business rule um, inside of our design environment. So we'll quick, we, what we want to create here is a rule that says if the user selects yes to this question we've asked on the first page, we'd like to show and hide this page in our user journey. So what we're going to look at is just how quickly it, quick and easy it is to build a new rule. In this case, it's a visibility rule. And not only do we have the ability to identify the data element that this rule is going to be driven off of, but we can also see the values that are mapped into that widget as well. And that's just how quick and easy it is. Um, let's take a look and preview what we've built so far and test it out. So you can see we've added some fields. We've got our uh, button bar down in the bottom section of our screen. And I think if we select uh, yes to our co-applicant, you'll notice that we have a new page showing up in our navigation bar to collect that information from the co-applicant. Notice also that we, um, you can preview this in, in desktop mode, but we can also preview across all of our device types and you can see the changes to the navigation and uh, implementation of, uh, of navigating through this experience. And we also have some predefined device types, uh, such as the, the iPad, and we can take a look at that and rotate it from portrait to landscape mode. Now let's go back into design mode and further build out the co-applicant page. What, but before we do that, let's take a look at our the page we've already built up for the applicant. We've got everything we need here to um, identify this, uh, this customer that we want to onboard, including their name and some address details, a little bit about their um, ID type as well, including that integration of pre-fill. And we don't want to rebuild this. So what our platform allows you to do is define a group of objects and build a reusable component. And that's exactly what we've done here. And when we go back to the co-applicant page, we can simply drop this collection of widgets, which we've called your details, onto the co-applicant page. We also want to uh, provide this capability of pre-filling from a license into our um, application. So let's go ahead and add that as well. So this addresses that problem of being painted into the corner. Um, in this case, we've solved the difficult, the platform allows you to solve that difficult problem of integrating with a service or an interface and building it into a simple, reusable, configurable component. And that's all that's left to do here. We can configure the text that we display in the messaging back to the user as they interact with it. And we can also set up the data mappings of the data that's coming back from this third party into the appropriate fields we've already laid out into our application. And again, you can see that that is pretty quick and easy. Let's go ahead and save these changes, and we would do that, uh, wire those up to all of the fields that are coming back from that uh, component. Lastly, we need to solve the problem of branding this and styling it to meet your requirements. And what we're demonstrating here is the ability to apply a new style to an existing application. In this case, we've just made simple uh, styling changes of a primary color and an image uh, logo. But this um, styling customization applies to all of the um, cosmetic and functional attributes of all of the widgets inside of our onboarding experience. So hopefully we've shown you um, some of these, a uh, few of the features that are in our platform. Um, we've shown that it's pretty quick to get there. 
and most of this is configuration, not coding. We've also talked about the extensibility of our platform with both widgets and with styling. We believe that Avoca Transact pr will provide you with two things that you do not have. Number one, the ability to rapidly deliver frictionless customer experiences. And number two, the ability to rapidly iterate and increase your business agility. We are Avoca, and we believe our, our platform will help you with your um, digital acquisition. And we'd love to talk to you about that in more detail while you're at the show. Thank you very much. Okay.